Hey guys, welcome back. Good to see you all. Good to be seen. I have some things to show off today. I got some pickups. I, things are starting to get a little cluttered with all the Black Friday sales starting to trickle in and some of the things that I ordered over the last couple weeks are starting to pile up. So I thought I had, I'd go ahead now and show you guys some of the additions I picked up over the last couple weeks and get ready for some more stuff to come in and I'll show that probably in the next week or two. I want to do a couple shout outs in this video. I have a really big box that I'm going to show you guys at the end. Um, it's something I didn't really plan on getting but I got such a good deal on it and it's it's sold out already. It's out of print. I, I got lucky to pick up this edition. I'll show you that at the end. <laughs> it's got my I'm all tongue-tied just thinking about it. Um, the first shout out I'm going to do is to 1428 Rip and he's on YouTube and we're also Facebook friends. His name is Robert. Um, he's got a very good channel and this dude has an awesome voice. <laughs> um, go check him out. He does a lot of horror update videos, but he doesn't just do horror. He does a little variety of a lot of new releases and stuff like that. I think some of his latest pickups. He got uh, BFG, he got the new Pete's Dragon, and he got Don't Breathe that just came out this past Tuesday. Now I can't remember if that was on YouTube or Facebook, but go give Robert a sub. Check him out. Tell him Walnut sent you. He's a great guy. Really good YouTuber. And I told him I was going to shout him out because it's well deserved. Um, he, I think he has about 150 subscribers, but he deserves way, way more than that. So let's go give him some sub, guys. Help him out a little bit. Make a new friend. Um, another shout-out I'll do. I uh, guess I'll do the arrow video next, and I'm going to do another shout-out here. And then we'll get the two shout-outs out of the way. This is from my buddy Jeremy, who is OP0909. He contacted me about a week and a half ago or so, I think. Two weeks ago. And he asked me if I was interested in picking up some of the things he was selling and we're Facebook friends as well as YouTube friends long story short he sent me a message and he sent me pictures of some of the things he was selling and I told him I wanted this this is the burning steel book from arrow video it's out of print I, I do have two of these now um, I may give one away in a upcoming contest I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet but it's a really nice collector's piece I wanted to have it he told me to make him an offer and I made him an offer, a really fair, solid offer. He took it, so I'm not going to discuss what we paid or exchanged because I think that's kind of tacky to talk about, you know, what you paid for stuff. But I thought it was a fair deal. He thought it was a fair deal, and so we made the deal. And he also sent a, a note, and here it says, What's up, Todd? Thanks for buying this off of me. Please take care of it. I know you will, and yes, sir, I will. I take care of all my stuff especially my arrow stuff and steel books. It will have a good home, Jeremy. Trust me. Have enjoyed your vids and getting to know you. And I same here. Um, keep doing your thing and thanks for being a bud. Hope you and your family have a very happy Thanksgiving. Take care, brother. It's Jeremy Opie0909. So he's become very popular in the short time he's been on YouTube. So a lot of you guys know who Jeremy is. But for those of you who don't, that's his channel right there, OP0909. So please do yourselves a favor. Go check him out. He's got a great channel. He's a really nice guy. So those are the two shout-outs, um, 1428 RIP and OP0909. So thank you for this, Jeremy. It, we'll have a good home here. And I got one other arrow title I'll show you guys. Well, I actually have more arrow, but that's... And it's going to be in a different uh, box. I picked up some stuff from Grindhouse Video in Tampa. So, But this is the other edition I got directly from Arrow. And this is Creepshow 2, the box set. And this is really nice. I haven't opened it yet. I may do that in an, another video. I did a little, like a little unboxing video of this. But for now, I'm just going to kind of keep it sealed for this video. And this has a ton of special features. It has a new 2K restoration from Original Film Elements has the high def blu-ray and uncompressed mono audio optional Eng english subtitles 
It has Creepshow Pinfall limited edition booklet featuring the never before seen comic adaptation of the unfilmed Creepshow 2 seg segment. Jeez, I can't talk. Pinfall by artist Jason Mayo. It has audio commentary with director Michael Gornick. Nightmares in Foam Rubber, archived featurette on the special effects of Creepshow 2, including interviews with FX artists Howard Berger and Greg Nicotero. It has my friend Rick Berger on his special effects mentor, Rick Baker. Behind the scenes footage, trailers, Collector's booklet featuring new writing on the film by festival programmer Michael Blythe. And Reversible Sleeve featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by Mike Saputo. So I will do an unboxing of this in a different video. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we'll do an unboxing in a different video. But this is a really nice looking edition. There you can see the Amore and the thick booklet right there. the spine. There's the back again and the top. Uh, the next thing I'll show here, I just kind of have a random little stacks of piles of movies here. This is uh, some of the things I picked up on eBay. Um, yeah, we'll show this one. This is an out-of-print title from Blue Underground called Bad Boy Bubby. And this movie is bizarre it's beyond bizarre for those of you who have seen it you know what I'm talking about it's um I think there's only four actors in the entire movie and it's about a guy Bubby who was raised in a two-room like a little apartment basement type of apartment by his overbearing mother who was very strict on him and told him that if he ever went outside he would die because the air is toxic so when she would leave, she would put on a gas mask and leave him sitting in a chair all day till she comes back. And you can see scenes where he urinates on the chair because he's been sitting there so long. She makes him have sex with her several times, and he doesn't know any better, so he thinks he's doing good. And it's there's uh, animal torture in this film. Um, I don't like to see that at all, even if it's fake. Um, some of the things he did to the cat in this movie, you you can't convince me that it was fake. And I did read the IMDb about this to see if it was real. And it, um, spoiler alert, if uh, you guys haven't seen this yet and you're going to watch it, you might want to turn this next part off or mute it for a couple seconds. But uh, okay, spoiler alert right now. But the cat that he has in the cage in that little two room apartment, he's poking it with a stick through the the holes in the cage. Like poking on the head and the eyes on the neck and stuff like that. Well, I looked on the IMDb page and there was a real feral cat that they had that they ended up putting to sleep for the scene when Bubby wrapped it in saran wrap so it couldn't breathe anymore and he killed it. But there was another cat, like a house cat, pet cat, that they used for the other scenes where like he was holding it. I, I don't know. But it's just, I, it's really uncomfortable. This movie makes my skin crawl. <laughs> it is so gross and weird. I, I just, I can't recommend it. I mean, at the same time, you couldn't stop watching it because it's so weird and bizarre that it's just one of those films, it's like a train wreck, but you know, you can't keep your eyes off it, even though you know it's wrong, it's bad. But um, I don't know if I could recommend this to anybody. Uh, it's a rare title. It's going for some pretty good money because it's been out of print now for a couple of years. But if you can get it for like, 25 or less I would say take the gamble But some of the prices that I've seen on eBay are like 70 80 100 dollars for this. I would say pass pass on it completely Don't even waste your time on that one <laughs> But if you can get it for 25 20, you know something like that go ahead and check it out uh, The next one here is not a horror title, but it's a steelbook. I kind of I've been kind of peeping this one for a little bit and I finally found one for a decent price. Uh, I've seen these go for about 40. I picked this one up for 25. It's the four films. I believe that's pronounced Leica. I'm not sure, but it has Coraline, Paranorman, Box Trolls, and Kubo and the Two Strings. 
And the cool thing about the steelbook here is all the titles come on their own disc on Blu-ray. There's uh, Coraline, Paranorman, Box Trolls, and Kubo. And it does have some pretty nice interior artwork. I don't think they... I did buy this used, but it seems like they didn't even watch Coraline because it came out pretty tight. So Kubo is the newest one out of the four. But there's the back. And I enjoy these little films here. For the price I got it, it was a good pickup. Good addition to the collection. Here's something I'm going to go over in a different video. This is a book. It's called 613. A Friday the 13th movie trivia book. And maybe one night um, I'll load a, upload a video and uh, we can have a little fun with this book. Go through it. But for now I'm just going to kind of show it a little bit. Yeah, I think I'll save that for a different video. We'll have fun with that. Maybe we'll have some kind of a contest or something to see who can answer the most Jason questions. I don't know how we'll do it, but um, the next four titles here I picked up from Scream Factory. And this one is Up From The Depths. These are the these are four of the five titles that they released at the end of this past summer. I believe these are limited to 1,000. And I know for sure Deathstalker and Deathstalker 2 sold out. But these other four I think are still available. At least they were for me. I got these on Scream Factory. And I uh, haven't seen the film yet, but I wanted to pick this up. I was a little bit late on this. I, I did have it pre-ordered, then I canceled it. And then by the time I reordered these uh, Deathstalker and Deathstalker 2 is sold out. I looked on eBay and Amazon and they're going for like 80 bucks for Deathstalker and Deathstalker 2 but if I find it for a decent price I will pull the trigger on that one but for now I'm gonna have to pass on it at 80 bucks. The next one here is the Velvet Vampire and this is another Scream Factory that was limited to 1000. Um, it's a film from 1971 originally. It does have audio commentary with star Celeste Yarnall. It has a photo gallery and a theatrical trailer. And ordinarily I'm not really into the these kind of um, sexy vampire type films. I just never really got into the vampire films but I thought I'd give it a go. Let me go back to Up From The Depths and see what kind of special features they had. There's a making of featurette, TV and radio spots in the trailer. And I do love creature feature films, so that, that ought to be a good one. If anybody has seen any of these, go ahead and comment below without giving spoilers, please. Here's the third one that was limited to 1,000. This is Message from Space. Where fantasies are real and reality is fantastic. It does look pretty cool, like a... Um, what do you call it, like a battleship or whatever out in space. Some kind of uh, cheesy sci-fi from 1978. And this is one I have not seen either. Comes with a trailer, still gallery, and on-disc essay from August Ragoni. Looks like a fun little film. And the last one here is Time Walker. I opened this one up to see if these had reversible covers, so I will open this one for you guys. Was it Shelley Long? No, I don't think it is. Nina Axelrod. Okay, this looks like a really cheesy sci-fi alien type film. It comes with interviews with producer Dimitri Villard and actor Kevin Brophy, and it has a trailer. Uh, there we go. Okay, so they don't have, re well, at least this one doesn't have a reversible cover, but it does have an image on the inside of, looks like a mummy in space. And there's the disc art.
So those are the four that were limited to 1,000. Like I said, I still have to get Deathstalker and Deathstalker 2. I've been looking. And if I can find it for around 40, even 45, I think I'll pull the trigger. But anything more than that, I'm going to have to let it pass because I'll just get the DVD. I know there was a four-pack DVD with the Deathstalkers on there. This is one I've been waiting for. This is the collector's edition of Black Christmas. And this is a really nice edition. I have not opened it yet, but the slipcover looks really good. And this is a good, fun um, holiday horror film. This is the original from 1974. And I do have the Canadian edition with the slipcover, the Seasons Grievings edition. But this is one I wanted to double dip on. And this one did come with the poster. I'm not going to pull it out. But it does have this image right here. So that is really cool. I like this movie. Glad to own that. And this is one I was a little bit disappointed in. This is uh, Twilight Time, Moby Dick. When it came to my house, it was all smashed up. I don't know if you guys can really make that out. I'm sure you can. It's pretty bad. I mean, there's big chunks of plastic missing. It's still sealed. I haven't opened it. And it even punctured the... The uh, insert there. So I contacted Screen Archives, even though it wasn't their fault. It was obviously, I mean, they, they shipped it in a bubble mailer, which is fine. I mean, I usually never have, 99% of the time, bubble mailers are good for something like this. Just one little movie. But somewhere in the mailing transaction, somehow between, you know, the truck or the delivery guy or whatever, something happened where it got stepped on or something. It had to have. Um, so I contacted Screen Archives and they said they were going to send me a new one So, and I asked them if they want me to send this one back and they said no so I don't know what I'm going to do with this one I'll just keep it sealed I'm sure the disc is fine I can't hear it rattling it's just I'm very picky with my movies but even so I mean even if you're not picky you don't want something like that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep this sealed and I'll have an extra copy of the film if I ever need it somewhere I would never sell this because I'm picky with my collection. I assume everybody's picky with theirs. So I don't sell stuff that I don't think is immaculate. So I would never sell something like this. I may give it away if somebody wants that. Comment below. I'll give that to you. But I'm not going to take any money for it. Um, and the, the last thing here I got from eBay was uh, from one of my buddies, Twisted Chris. Um, his eBay seller name is... Jeffrey Lee Gacy so you guys some of you guys may know him he's been around for a long time and he sells really nice stuff a lot of imported stuff he's here in the US but he buys a lot of stuff from Europe and uh, Germany and um, this is the what is it called now it's the infinity pictures in conjunction with studio canal so Germany and France collaborated here to bring you Evil Dead 2 and the ne Necronomicon edition. I have several different Necronomicon editions. Um, I know Studio Canal is based in France, and but this is a German import. So that's uh, German right there. And everything on the back is in German. So I'm not going to be able to read that to you guys, but this is the Blu-ray DVD combo. And it is limited to 2000, and it's been out of print for three years now. It's been out of print since 2013. And it comes with a 32-page media book. So that's really cool. Glad to pick that up and add it to the Evil Dead collection. And Chris threw me in some freebies, as he always does. And uh, we're friends on... I'm going to link him down below for his eBay channel. Um, and then you guys can get with him. But I'm not going to tell you his Facebook page because I'm not sure if he wants people to know it. If um, if you guys contact him through eBay, maybe he'll give it to you. I just don't want to invade his privacy. Some people don't like that. Me, I don't care if you guys know my Facebook, but I just don't want to give his away. Um, this one says Dark Side Trailers on DVD. I'm not sure what that is, but he always gives some fun little stuff. And then this is another, like a, a DVD R of Zombies, zombies, zombies. So I'm not sure what that is, but it's a it's a Blu-ray. It's got a lot of dust on it. <laughs> not from my house. 
My house is not dusty. Well, not that dusty. Then he threw me in a little magnet here. It says the mad. You are what they eat. I do own this, but I have never watched it yet. He also threw me in a little, looks like a sticker of Wolf Cop. And he threw me in a sticker of, or a tattoo, I'm not sure what that is, of uh, Terminator Salvation. We fight back. A little sticker of Box of Dread. <laughs> what the heck is this? Oh, Hostel Part 2. I don't know how you get... I think I've seen Hostel Part 2, but I don't remember a Bloodhound in there. Temporary Tattoos. He threw me in two of them. A little art card here for Contracted. IFC. That looks pretty cool. There's one here for The Black Room with Natasha Henstrich. Uh, when does this come out? Or is it already out? It says um, 2016, so it must be out already because it's we're in December now. And Box of Dread. A little postcard type dealio. So that's pretty cool. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you guys here is an order I have to thank Jeff Wedding for giving me the heads up on this company here. This is uh, Grindhouse Video. Not to be confused with Grindhouse Releasing. It's two totally different companies. But Grindhouse Video had a Black Friday sale and they have a lot of, well they have a lot of everything, but they did have some Arrow Video titles on sale. So I picked up, let's see, one, two, three, four, five titles. One I owned already, but I wanted to get another one just because it's a collector's piece and it's going to be worth a lot of money, I think. And the other four I didn't own yet, so I'd like to add to my Arrow collection every chance I get. And if you guys are interested, I don't know if my camera's going to be able to uh, zoom in there, but it's Grindhouse Video from Tampa, Florida. The first one I got here is Dark Water, and this is one of their latest releases this one came out about a maybe a month or two ago a month and a half ago somewhere around there i can't remember some more japanese cinema i've been really into the japanese cinema lately this is uh hideo nakata's dark water this is region ab the film was from 2002 but it was just released by arrow in 2016 like i said about a month and a half ago Ghosts, rings, and water. There's a lot of special features here. Reversible sleeve, as always. Let's see what else do they have. Okay, that ghost, rings, and water is a brand new interview with director Hideo Nakata. Family Terror is a brand new interview with author Koji Suzuki. Visualizing Horror, a brand new interview with cinematographer Junichiro Haya Hayashi. <laughs> okay. I'm probably going to butcher some of these. Has archive interviews with actress Hitomi Kuroki and Asami Mizukawa and theme song artist Shikao Suga. Original making of documentary, so that'd be pretty fun to watch. Based upon the short story by Ring author Suzuki. Dark Water follows Yoshi, Yoshimi, a single mother struggling to win sole custody of her only child, Ikuku, when they move into a new home within a dilapidated and long-forgotten apartment complex. Yoshimi begins to experience startling visions and unexplainable sounds, calling her mental well-being into question and endangering not only her custody of Ikuku, but perhaps their lives as well. I've heard this kind of compared to like um, the Babadook, you know, that kind of um, that insanity, the, the mental insanity kind of horror to it. The mother's whatever. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad I picked it up. It was pretty cheap. I can't remember what I picked these up for. I don't know if I have a packing slip in here. Um, the next one I have here, I've this is the third time I've owned it. I own it for myself. I gave it away in a contest, and now I picked it up for a third time. 
This is The Hills Have Eyes. Wes Craven's original, starring Michael Berryman. And I do love this movie. This is the Region A. The unrated edition, this is from the 1977 film, and this is the 4K restoration of the film, and it's it's packed with, uh, you got the box, or the book, I mean, and the uh, Amory case in there. And there's a ton of special features. Here's a making of documentary. There's interviews with uh, Wes Craven, Michael Berryman, D. Wallace. Um, you got Family Business, a brand new interview with actor Martin Spear. Um, the Desert Sessions, brand new interview with composer Don Peake. Never before seen outtakes, alternate ending. This thing here is packed, and I this is one you guys definitely need to add to your collection if you don't already have it. This is a really good addition here. And eventually these are going to sell out um, with this slip box in the book, and then they'll probably just sell the Amory case. So you might want to get the box set while you can, while it's still pretty cheap. So go over to uh, Grindhouse Video um, on their website and check it out and see if they still have sales on that. This one here is one I wanted to get for a while. I just kind of waited for the price to go low. This is Dillinger. This is the Blu-ray DVD combo. I love gangster films. And this is the 2K restoration. The film came out in 73, but this was just put out on Blu-ray by Arrow in 2016. I think early summer, early to mid-summer, they put this one out, if I'm not mistaken, of 2016. So looking forward to checking that one out. Glad I put it in the collection. Here's another one. For some reason on eBay, this one was going around 30 bucks, But I think I got it for about 12 on the Grindhouse video website. This is a Giallo film called The Bloodstained Butterfly. And this is the Blu-ray DVD combo. Eventually, I probably would have spent 30 for this, but when I saw it was like, I think it was like 12 or 15, something like that, I, I snapped it up. And this is a film from 1971. This is Region A here. This is the U.S. release of it. And I do enjoy some Giallo films. And the last one here is La Grande Bouffe. La Grande Bouffe. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, guys. I'm really not, but... I know Shagrat65 recommended this one. The, um, the English title of this is The Big Feast. And this is the 2K restoration. The film is from 1973, and it's, this is the region AB. So it's US and UK. And other than that, I don't know a lot about the film. I don't know anything about the film, just that uh, Shagrat65 mentioned it. So kind of giving him a shout-out at the same time. And uh, I'm going to give him a shout-out later in the video on the last thing that I show. Um, and I got a big box of goodies here from Bill Olson over at Code Red DVD. He told me he was going to send me a freebie, which is, uh, if you know Bill Olson... That's hard to believe. I don't want to show you guys our addresses, but this is from Bill Olson. I don't know if you can see that up there. It's not important to this, but this is what he sent me. He's got one, you are one sick bastard, Bill, but I like that. So thank you. He sent me four rolls of bathroom tissue. You're all right, Bill. And I picked up 10 titles from Bill this time around. I'm just going to kind of go through these pretty quick because we're already at almost 30 minutes. So I didn't want to make this too long. I only have uh, these 10 titles to show and I got one box set to show at the end. And then we're going to wrap this up. This is Assault on Paradise starring Oliver Reed. And it's Code Red 58. The Maniac Kills Anywhere, Anytime. Their Agony Was His Ecstasy. This is All Region. And this is one of those PG horror films. Cult Status, Cult Classic. Here is Mission Kill. Starring Cameron Mitchell. And that is Code Red 75. And this is also Region ABC. Looking forward to popping this one in. This one might go in tonight. Not sure yet, but that's 
there's a good chance that might be the one for tonight. Next one here is Lord Shango. Sacrifice your soul to Shango in the blood ritual of life and death. Spine 73. And this is region A in the film. I'm trying to see when this one came out. This was definitely a 70s. 74, it says. In the voodoo mysticism type films, I like those. Lord Shango. I was pretty excited about getting this one. This is Mark of the Witch. Innocent Coed or Bride of the Devil. Spine 84. Rated R. Region ABC. Anamorphic widescreen. And the film is from... Definitely, I would say... It's definitely 70s, but I would say probably early 70s, maybe 72, 73. I'm not seeing it on the back. It has a brand new 2, 2K scan of the original negatives in a trailer. Next one here is probably my favorite pickup in this pile. And this is Sasquatch and Encounter with the Unknown. This is another title that Kyle, Shagrat65 recommended. But this is one I was going to pick up anyway. But I'm glad to know that Shagrat65 likes this. I do love the Bigfoot films. And it's region ABC. And 1975, it looks like. And anamorphic widescreen, rated PG. Definitely looking forward to checking this out. It says, Encounter with the Unknown and Rod Serling from TV's Twilight Zone phones in a shocking trilogy of UHF television level thrills. So that's pretty cool. That's an anthology with... Rod Serling, and then Sasquatch, obviously, is a uh, Bigfoot film. Um, it almost kind of looks like documentary style. Looking forward to checking that out. Maybe I'll pop that in tonight. I picked up another edition, another copy here of A Long Ride from Hell, because I sent the, my other one to Carlos over in the UK, my buddy Carlos. So I had to pick one up for myself now. This is a Spaghetti Western starring Steve Reeves, who played in many Hercules films, but as far as I know, this was his only Spaghetti Western. It's region ABC, it is rated R. And this one does have some special features, it has a 2K HD scan, it has an on-camera interview with outlandish Memo Peralta Pal Palmera, wow, sorry about that. Boogie down with the late Steve Reeves in Candid Featurette at home with Steve Reeves. And join the Steve Reeves fan club and meet the Hercules man himself. And this is the 40th anniversary edition here. And this is Spine 65. And Code Red released this on DVD. And uh, Wild East also released this on DVD. And Code Red's edition blew Wild East away. So I'm looking forward to checking out the uh, Blu-ray edition of that. Here's a little fun one here called the Moonshine County Express. Starring John Saxon, who plays in a lot of B-movies. Uh, Marie McCormick and Claudia Jennings. Candace Rialson. And William Conrad. And Susan Howard. She drives the fastest car in the state. She has the best shine in the world. Together they make Moonshine County Express. They make it every night. Spine 76. Region ABC, anamorphic widescreen, um, rated PG. There's uh, Maureen McCormick, who played Marsha Brady, and there's John Saxon. And there's William Conrad. Fun little film from the 70s, 1976, by the way. I don't remember if I said that or not, but uh, here is Black Candles. Very happy to get this one. I have a feeling this one's going to be sold out, so if you guys didn't pick this one up already... You might want to grab this one because I have a feeling this one's going to be hard to find. You might want to get a couple if you can. Keep one for yourself and maybe think about selling one down the road or trading it or whatever. But um, This is from 1982. Anamorphic widescreen. All region. Unrated. And the uh, 
satanic devil possession. Um, these uh, sexploitation type films are really good. I like these. Sex and the Devil, a wicked combination. Two more here from Bill at Code Red. This is Running Scared, another one starring John Saxon. Mercilessly hunted down for a deadly secret they possess. Spine 81. Anamorphic widescreen, all region, 1980, rated PG. And it has, uh, that looks like a very young Judge Reinhold right there. Let me double check that down here. Starring Ken Wall. Yep, Judge Reinhold. And John Saxon plays Munoz. And there you can see they put a mustache on him and called him Munoz. Only in America. America. And the last one here is uh, Mutant. Starring Wings Hauser and Bo Hopkins. I had this in a German hard box at one time that I, I sold all my hard boxes. I wish I had them back, but I, I sold them all. I did um, pick up a couple since then, though. This is spy number 79. I'm only going to pick up the ones I really, really want because they do take up a lot of space. They're very nice, though. They're about the size of a VHS clamshell. This is Region A from 1984. Rated R, anamorphic widescreen. This looks like a really fun film. I don't really remember much about it. But glad to own it just the same. Okay, so the last pickup here I'm going to show you guys. You're going to think I'm crazy for, for picking this up, but I did get it for a great deal, and there's a good story behind it. I got in contact with director, producer, actor, writer, Tim Sullivan. Um, and he directed, here I got to get my little cheat sheet out here because there's so much I got to tell you about this guy. Well, I knew he directed 2001 Maniacs in 2005. He was the writer and director. That was the one starring Robert England, by the way. He got his start in film in 1983 as a special effects guy for The Deadly Spawn in 1983. And he reached rock star status when he was VH1 Scream Queens director in 2008. Um, he knew H.G. Lewis personally, and they worked together. And he also did a segment on Chillerama. It was a, like a little anthology. You guys might have this already. This was put out by uh, Image. And you can see Tim Sullivan right there. He did the... I was a teenage werebear, I believe was the... Let me see. Yeah, I was a teenage werebear. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to pick that up because my camera's not going to focus. But um, this is a pretty good little anthology from 2011. If you guys can pick... look at it, I mean, look at that cover art. And the anthology is really good. So anyway, um, it says, Two Walnuts, H.G. Lewis Forever. So Tim has, he's in three of the bonus features in this box set. And I'll show you the box that he sent this to me in. I'm not going to show you his address. But this is from Tim, uh, Tim Sullivan, and it's the Shock and Gore box set even though I had the other one already. He had three of these because he participated in the bonus features. And they sent Arrow sent them three boxes, and he sent me one for a really, really good price. So I, I couldn't pass it up. And uh, I had a little bit of correspondence with him online and struck a deal. I'm not going to tell you how much it was. But back to Shag Rat 65, I believe he did an unboxing of this. So I'm going to link his unboxing below because I'm not going to unbox this one, at least not right now. This video is really long already. But this is the Shock and Gore, the films of Herschel Gordon Lewis box set that was limited to 500 pieces. I also have the other one that was limited to 1,500 pieces. That was the one that looked like a cereal box. This one is much bigger. Um, 
was going to show you guys a comparison size, but I don't want to take up too much more time. But that was a kindly transaction by Mr. Tim Sullivan. So thank you for that, sir. He told me he did see some of my videos. Um, and it was his idea to sign this to Walnuts, not mine. So I, I like it. I like it a lot. So, but it's not like I said, hey, will you sign this to Walnuts? So my, you know, it wasn't like that. But I want to tell you guys a little trivia. If, um, if you ever watched Jeepers Creepers, the one from 2001, the original, um, Tim was friends with one of the, not the director, not the director from Jeepers Creepers. He was friends with one of the set designers or the storyboard artists. I can't remember exactly what the story was, but his friend that was helping with the movie put a wanted poster for, had Tim's picture on there and his name in the police station. So if you guys go and look at that scene, you'll see Tim and Tim Sullivan's name on the, uh, this little fun little trivia fact in the police station in Jeepers Creepers. But he also did a, uh, kind of like a sequel to his 2001 Maniacs, which I do own 2001 Maniacs on DVD. I'd like to get that upgraded to Blu-ray at some point. But he also did one called 2001 Maniacs Field of Screams, which I have not seen yet. And it came out in 2010, so i got to make it a point to uh, pick that one up. So that was it, guys. That was my haul for the past couple weeks. Um, there was also a little card that was... This is the one that I had right here. Or I still have it, actually. It's the Feast one, and it's like the size of a cereal box, but it's, this one's much bigger here. This is huge. But I will leave a link down below so you can go over to Shag Rat's channel and look at a proper unboxing of this. I think he went through and showed everything on that. So, All right, guys, uh, comment below. Let me know what you guys think of the haul. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it. If you haven't subbed, please feel free to and uh, check the links below. Go give those guys a sub. And other than that, I'm just kind of rambling now. So I'm going to cut it short here, guys. Later. Thanks for watching.